Today on Ham Radio Q&A, should the Baofeng UV5R be your first ham radio? We'll talk about that, so please keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, hey, I'm going to start things out by doing a little test. I have two radios, uh, my Yesu handheld, which is the VX8R, and uh, a Baofeng UV5R handheld. I'm going to do a couple of test transmissions and see if you can tell the difference uh, between these two radios. I'll have the answer to that at the end of this video. KB9 VBR testing. One, two, three, four, five. KB9 VBR testing. One, two, three, four. Four, five, six. Well, these little Baofeng handhelds, some have called them the savior of ham radio, and others uh, say they're nothing but a scourge to the hobby. But one thing is for sure, they are inexpensive, and most new hams gravitate towards them as their first radio, due primarily to the price. So in this video, I'm going to look at some of the pros and cons of the UV5R, and if it's a good choice for your first uh, handheld radio. I'll start, I'll start off with the number one reason why the Baofengs are a good first radio. And, well, the UV5R handhelds, they're inexpensive. You know, if you scour eBay and Amazon, you'll find the Baofeng UV5R style radios for around $30. Why is that? It boils down to technology. The little radios are highly integrated using software-defined radio technology and direct conversion RF sampling to inexpensively produce a handheld radio. You know, most of the operation is contained on a few integrated circuits, so they can be really cheaply produced. Combined with um, large-scale manufacturing integration and the low cost of labor overseas, you can see why the um, Baofeng UV5R has become such a great deal, a great um, price deal in the ham radio community. But on the other side of the coin, what they lack is the filtering and selectivity that you're going to find in more expensive models, which can be a downside so they can be easily overloaded by strong nearby transmitters and they may not be able to receive weaker signals as well as a more expensive transceiver. But still, you know, their performance is quite good and they will have no trouble operating under typical conditions. In fact, if you were to use one on your local repeater, I highly doubt anyone will be able to tell what radio you're using. But their low price point can also affect the quality control. If you shop the upper end of the UV5R price range, you know, you're going to be getting a radio with a little bit better quality control and also end user support. These radios pretty much all come out of the same factory, but may be produced in lots or batches with different levels of quality. Or as the radios are tested, you know, when they come off the line, the ones that fail the quality test may be rebadged and sold by a lesser distributor. But despite all this, the newer Baofeng models are of decent quality and you know their quality has generally improved over the years. I believe, I believe that they are now reasonably good. Still, the bottom line on performance and quality is that you get what you pay for and purchase one from you know a trusted distributor. Product reviews are going to be your friend on that. Besides the price, other reasons I like my Baofeng handheld radio is that programming really isn't that difficult anymore. When the UV5R hit the market many years ago, the method of programming was quite alien compared to what other radios on, on the market were, were, were done. Uh, these radios initially came with uh, custom programming software that was utter trash. But applications like Chirp have made this process easy and programming one of these radios is more like you know, cut and paste on the computer. And finally, the, the reason I love the, the Baofengs is their batteries last forever. Put this radio away for six months, pull it out, and the battery will still have a charge on it. Using the radio, you know, the battery seems to last all day, and certainly on standby, you're going to get a very long operating time. So these radios, you know, they're very well suited as backup rigs that can be stowed in a backpack or a go kit and be ready, you know, for that occasional use. But there are downsides, and some of which have become big sticking points uh, within the amateur radio community and also people in purchasing and using these radios. Namely, there's still some question on the legality of Baofeng radios, primarily on two different issues. First off, is their ability to transmit anywhere on the VHF and UHF bands? And second, is the cleanliness of their transmissions. 
First off, I'll acknowledge, yes, most Baofeng UV 5Rs can transmit outside the amateur radio bands. And last year, the FCC issued an enforcement action against a distributor advertising a UV 5R as Part 90 type accepted, when in fact it did not meet that criteria. Distributors had the options of not advertising the radio as such, and to limit the frequencies of which the UV 5R could transmit on. Many have done, done that, and you can purchase a UV 5R that initially won't transmit outside the amateur radio band. These radios still aren't type accepted in the US to be used on business, public safety, or personal radio services, but you know they're perfectly fine for amateur radio use, and licensed amateur radio operators can use Baofeng UV 5Rs on the two meter and 70 centimeter bands. So the FCC's enforcement letter concerning Baofeng UV 5R radios does not apply to amateur radio operators using the radio on the amateur radio band. Second, these inexpensive Baofeng handheld radios may not meet the criteria the FCC has imposed for spurious emissions on the amateur radio band. And I'm going to paraphrase here, but in FCC Part 97.307, subparagraph E, the mean power of any spurious emission from a station transmitter transmitting between 30 and 225 megahertz must be at least 60 decibels below the mean power of the fundamental. For a transmitter having a mean power of 25 watts or less, the mean power of any spurious emission must not exceed 25 microwatts and must be at least 40 decibels below the mean power of the fundamental emission. So a handheld radio uh, transmitting on the VHF amateur radio bands needs to limit all spurious emissions, that is, the spurs and harmonics, to a level of 40 decibels below the transmit frequency. Well, can a Baofeng radio do that? Well, yes and no. There was a study conducted by the ARRL on spurious emissions created by several models of handheld transceivers. For several years, the league surveyed handhelds submitted to them by amateurs attending the Dayton Hamvention and found that major manufacturers' radios generally passed the spurious emissions test and Chinese manufacturers did not. But the results of this test are several years old, and I contend that newer Baofeng UV5Rs on the market have generally improved their ability to produce a clean signal. So what are my recommendations? Is a Baofeng UV5R a good investment? You know, I really think so. Uh, the radios are inexpensive and they work well. There's nothing wrong with picking one as your first radio as you dip your toes into the amateur radio world. You know, I keep a couple in my camping trailer because I know the batteries are going to last forever so they have, and they'll have power when I need them. The technology platform they're built on, you know, that direct conversion reception, is the direction the market is heading. So, you know, really my only caveat is that with these radios, you get what you pay for. So spending a little more or going with a better known brand, you know, you're going to be reasonably assured that you're going to get a model with better quality control. Now for those test results. I'll replay the clips, this time identifying which radio is which. This is the Baofeng handheld. KB9 VBR testing. One, two, three, four, five. This is the Yesu handheld. KB9 VBR testing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Did you get the right answer? It's pretty tough to tell the difference. And over the air, you know, another listener will be hard pressed to determine what type of handheld radio you're using. So what are your feelings on the Baofeng UV5R? Is it a good starter radio or should a new ham look somewhere else? Leave them in the comments below. I'll filter through them and keep the conversation going. Maybe one will even show up on our next Your Questions Answered video. For more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Uh, your support of this channel drives the production of future videos, so if you like this video, you know, give me that big thumbs up. Uh, check out some of the other videos uh, recommended alongside here. You can pick up um, KB9 VBR Antennas merchandise uh, just on the link down below, so take a look at that. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Pressing subscribe is your way to be notified when future videos are released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9 VBR. Have a great day, and 73.